Well, Senator Bernie Sanders took the West Virginia primary last night. Hillary Clinton is just 667 delegates away from capturing the Democratic Party's nomination for the presidency. And Donald Trump wins yet another primary. We'll soon find out who possible running mates are. Here to join us in set to talk a little bit more about it are our political commentators, Mariah Starr and J.C. Polanco. And guys, welcome to the show. Thanks, Thanks so much Thanks for having, much having us. Having Thank you. And before we get into anything, J.C., let's talk. We have a couple, a little bit of breaking news right here in, in our borough. You know, uh, last year I had the honor of coming on your program and debating the legendary Ramon Jimenez over Oscar Lopez Rivera. I was fortunate to meet him here, and we went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and it was an exciting time. The most exciting debate I've ever had, and it was an honor to, and a privilege to debate him on the topic, you know, uh, Mr. Jimenez passed away yesterday. Uh, I want to send my condolences to his family. I know that everybody here who knows that he was a uh, social justice leader and a trailblazer for a lot of us young Hispanic attorneys. Um, I will send the best to his family, and uh, uh, I, I think every Bronx should, should take a moment of silence to pay tribute to this man who did phenomenal work for the Bronx. Definitely remember the life of Ramon Jimenez. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, Thank you. And Thank as you. we talk a little bit more, let's go into what the news of last night was. Of course, we know uh, Hillary Clinton a loser. And then we find out that Bernie Sanders wins West Virginia. Then you have Donald Trump mm -hmm. on the other side, of course, uh, with no one else in the party, uh, really winning. Let's talk about this for a minute, analyze for a second. Let's break this down. For Hillary Clinton, how much of a loss is this last night? It's a loss. Sanders won in a state that demographically matches with other states he's won. Small, rural, white. I mean, the state only has like, what, 1.5 million population, so it's not that big. Um, you have- But a state is a state. It's a, a state is a state, yeah. Every delegate counts, and he netted five yesterday. It's not a lot, but it's going to give him momentum going into Oregon, Kentucky, California. You know, the big states, Oregon, New Jersey, California, June 7th. Right. He did, he did, and when we say he netted five, he netted five more than Hillary Clinton. Five more uh, than Clinton, Hillary yes. Clinton, uh, well, yeah, I should say, uh, Bernie Sanders coming out with 66, uh, and then you have Hillary Clinton coming out with 61, five. Uh, JC's uh, chomping at the bit here. <laughs> this is awful. Hillary Clinton is just an awful front runner. I mean, she could end up winning the nomination having lost 45% of the Democratic vote. I mean, it's terrible that B Bernie Sanders, who's not even a Democrat, keeps winning primary after primary and giving this lady a run for her money. Now, I know that is mathematically possible, but practically impossible for Bernie to actually win the nomination. We're talking about him having to win the next 67% of all the delegates left if he really wants to have he a shot. He might actually do that. I though. don't think so. He'd have to win New Jersey. He'd have, come on, he'd have to win. If he wins New Jersey, he'd have to still win almost 70% of all of the delegates in California. That's not going to happen. I mean, it, it would be a shocker if it did. Think about it. But I think that one thing we shouldn't lose focus on is you know, a couple of months ago, we were laughing at, the, at this Trump guy. I know I've been laughing for a year, and that was not funny. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought that maybe a couple of weeks ago that it was going to be a landslide in Hillary's favor. Well, the polls are showing that this is getting neck and neck. And I think Bernie's doing quite a number well, let's talk yeah. about on this Hillary Clinton. Because, yeah. Well, let's talk about this because as you, as you look at Donald Trump's campaign now, it seems yeah. to be ripping off pages off of the Bernie Sanders script, giving, uh, wow. you know, lifting up some of the issues that Bernie Sanders is mm -hmm. lifting up. With, does Bernie Sanders staying in the race actually help Donald Trump or does it hurt the Democratic Party? I think, it, I think it helps Donald Trump tremendously. I mean, all he has to do is just repeat what, Trump, what uh, Bernie Sanders is saying. And it is hurting Hillary. But, and you then a, if, but if, then you, if that's the case, you have a Republican that's really speaking the words of a Democrat, right? Well, no, I think you're just speaking the words of a nemesis, which is going to be very helpful, especially during this campaign season where there are no rules. This is like one of those steel cage matches in the <laughs> WWE. I mean, it doesn't make any... I don't even understand what's happening anymore. All I see is Trump attacking Bill Clinton all day long, and now Bernie attacking Hillary all day long. She's getting it from two fronts. Well, this can be explained in one simple explanation. Both Sanders and Trump are responding to the, the legitimate concerns of voters to globalization, immigration, China. So they're kind of the same person except that they represent different parts of the parties. So Sanders actually helps the Democratic Party move it to the left. Clinton has been copying Sanders policies, you know, Medicare for all now, and Sanders polls better than Clinton against Trump. So we're looking at a possible Sanders-Trump matchup only if the superdelegates decide that the numbers favor Sanders. Which political uh, insider says is an extreme long shot. Well, yeah. Let me move to the area of uh, possible running mates. As we know, 
Uh, Donald Trump says he's down to a short list, five or six people as mm -hmm. potential running mates. Some people say he has to put a woman on the ticket if he really wants to be successful. On the other side, we know that there's a talk of possibly, if this, since things don't work, if things don't work out with Bernie Sanders, a possible Clinton Sanders ticket. Given the fact that uh, Bernie Sanders brings so much weight to the equation, let me get your, each of your thoughts on on both of those. I think it's really tough for a front-running candidate like Hillary and Trump to pick someone that is going to outshine them, and I think that. If Hillary were to pick Bernie Sanders, she'd be outshined for the next six months. It would make very little sense for her to do that. I do think Trump is a, is a different type of player. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I think that conventional wisdom say go with a, a woman, potentially a minority woman, which would you know maybe legitimize you to some parts of the electorate. But I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes with some Midwestern uh, white male senator and makes the case to the American people why this person should be a heartbeat away from the presidency. Yeah, so Sanders, Clinton, or Clinton-Sanders, either way, they are going to have to team up. My preference is Sanders-Clinton because Sanders has the vision, Clinton has the know-how. And if you go back in history, these teams, these balanced tickets win elections. Clinton-Gore, Reagan-Bush, Kennedy-Johnson. You have a history of a balanced ticket with vision at the front and then the political know-how at the back. Mm -hmm. So that's the foundation of politics right there. It's bringing opposites together. Clinton and Clinton Sanders are opposites. They need to build a bridge between them. Let me, uh, speaking of bridge, let me go to this topic right here. A uh, federal judge has ruled yesterday that prosecutors must relist, release a list of people uh, tied to the Bridgegate scandal in 2013, uh, even though uh, have not, which, who, even though they haven't been charged with a crime. Uh, what can we expect to see out of this, JC? I think that what you're referring to is the unindicted co-conspirators right. uh, mm -hmm. that the a uh, federal judge says should be released simply because the judge believes that because these people on the list may be appointed or elected officials, it's in the public interest to release them. This is going to be groundbreaking for attorneys that are watching right now. They know that unindicted co-conspirators have not been indicted, right? Mm -hmm. And these are people that there was not sufficient evidence to present probable cause for there to be a guilty verdict in trial. And many of them may find themselves in positions where they will be negatively viewed by the public, maybe ruin their careers, and had never done anything. So this is going to be one of those decisions that I think will be appealed up to up to the who knows maybe the Supreme Court as to whether or not unindicted co-conspirators should be made public but yeah. I think you're gonna see Chris Christie's hands somewhere in this mess mm -hmm. yeah th this is a, a major scandal that is well known now the media has covered it and all the judges cited is given the publicity it is appropriate for the people involved all the people involved to be known to the public so the public has full disclosure of, of the situation. Does this hurt Chris Christie in regards to possibly, you know, he's already endorsed Trump. Now word has said that if Trump does make it to, the, Donald Trump does make it to the White House, that Chris Christie could see a possible seat in the cabinet somewhere. Uh, would this hurt? Of course it would. I mean, I don't understand how he's even still playing around in the federal government. This is a guy who couldn't supervise four people in his office. Now he's supposed to be in charge of the transition team for Donald Trump and supervise tens of thousands, if not millions of employees. It, it's, uh, it's absurd. I think the guy's cooked. I think once you have employees have already pled guilty to crimes committed during this Bridgegate scandal and a trial that's going to begin in the fall, I mean, I don't know why Chris Christie's still in the picture. I don't. Yeah, he doesn't belong there. Um, I mean, he could conceivably have become attorney general under the Trump administration, but given this, he's probably out of the running. So I'm betting Trump will pick some senator like Rob Portman of Ohio or even Kasich because he needs Ohio to make his election prospects viable for the fall. I think that any, I think he's burned so many bridges, Donald Trump, that if he were to reach out to real quality vice presidential candidate material like Susanna Martinez or Nikki Haley, um, you would they, they would immediately reject because of how he has tried to destroy their reputation. It's going to be very interesting to see who he ends up picking for VP. I'm, and, I can't and, wait. And, and before we go, we want to talk about Paul Ryan for a second because this meeting is supposed to be taking place in just a day or so. But you've got to, yeah, yeah. Uh, just a day or so. Uh, what can we expect to see out of this? Do we see uh, a, a meeting of the establishment? I only have 30 seconds on each side. I think uh, Paul Ryan is brilliant for holding out. I think he wants Donald Trump to prove that he's a Republican. I think, and I think he's doing the right thing. Um, we'll see tomorrow, but I hope, I hope that he holds his ground through the convention and doesn't even chair this thing because this is going to be terrible for the Republican Party. Paul Ryan represents the only establishment mainstream Republican left in the party as the highest ranking official. So it's appropriate for him to meet with Donald Trump, but Donald Trump represents the Republican Party as it actually is. 
Paul Ryan is not the Republican Party. Donald Trump is the Republican Party. That's not true. That's absolutely false. That is false. absolutely true. That is all not data true. Shows it. Listen, all data does not show that. Listen, the reality is that Paul Ryan is a real Republican. He's a leader of the Republicans in this country. And this guy, Donald Trump, is a Democrat who just became a Republican two years ago and has taken the party hostage. He's not a Republican. I know that for a fact. Gotta break it up or gotta go to break. You see how he starts with me towards the end? <laughs> can't, no do, can't do that, Mariah. JC, Mariah, good to have you. <laughs>